So we're now starting on inferential statistics. This is chapter three, and we're gonna start by talking about sampling distributions. I'll say right off the bat, sampling distributions are one of the most abstract ideas in statistics, and I don't expect you to completely understand them until the end of the semester. It takes quite a bit of repetition in order to completely grasp them. So don't worry if by the end of chapter three, you still don't fully understand them, but please ask me as many questions as, as possible to try to wrap your head around them. I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna draw you my favorite picture again. So this is the one where we've got the population, that's the big thing that we're really interested in. And then we've got the smaller version, which is the sample. And the way that we found the sample is we randomly selected from the population and we got something that looked like the population only smaller. So this process going from the population to the sample, that is called sampling. And then we are trying to do uh, something going back in the other direction, moving from the sample to the population. We want to make statistical inference. And remember, inference is drawing conclusions about the population based only on information from the sample. So we, here we have that again. We're making inference, drawing conclusions about the population based only on information from the sample. And we have some terms, I think I've given these to you before. There's the idea of a statistic, uh, which is a number that describes a sample, and a parameter, which is a number that describes a population. So it's got a little bit of a mnemonic device, a sample statistic, and they both start with S, and then a population parameter, and they both start with P. So if we are talking about uh, the mean as a number that describes some group of data, if that group of data is from a population, we would call the mean mu. So that's the Greek letter mu. But we would call the statistic x bar. And then if we had a proportion calculated about a sample, we would call that sample statistic p hat. Standard deviation, the population parameter is sigma, the statistic is s. Uh, the correlation, the population parameter is rho, the statistic is r, etc. So we use the notation to denote whether it's about a population or a sample. So I'd like you to be able to recognize when a number is a parameter uh, coming from a population or a statistic coming from a sample. Uh, and I've got a few examples here. The first one is the average number of hours worked by Americans using data from the US Census. So is that uh, number, the average, is that a parameter or a statistic? Well, in this case, it's actually a parameter because the census collects data on all Americans, or it tries to, there are some people that get missed, uh, but the idea is that it's collecting data on everyone. So this would be a parameter and we can denote it mu. Uh, and I'd like you to think about these next two examples, the proportion of people who use Instagram from a survey of 300 adults, and the correlation between height and weight for players on the 2018 French World Cup team using data from all 23 players on the roster. Think about whether those are parameters or statistics, and maybe also think about the notation that you would use for each of those, um, those quantities, and we'll talk about that during synchronous class. So let's think a little bit about election polling. Uh, before the 2020 presidential election, this polling company Quinnipiac, I think is how it's pronounced, did a poll of 1,500 likely voters, and they asked, who do you support for president? Um, and the question is, what proportion of likely voters planned to vote for Biden in this poll? And that's this number right here. It looks like 50% of voters. So I could write that as 0 0.50 if I wanted to, and I could say that that is p hat, because it's from a sample. 
we might want to make a conclusion about what's going to happen in the whole election with the entire population, but all we have is the information from that sample. So if we need to make a guess about a population parameter, our best guess is just going to be to use the sample statistic, to use that one number. We call that a point estimate. So my point estimate based on that poll would be 50%. But there were actually lots of polls that were conducted in the lead up to the election. So there, The Economist did a poll, um, IBD, Reuters, CNBC, Rasmussen, there's a bunch of different polls. And they have slightly different sample proportions. So in this poll, 53% said that they would vote for Biden, 50%, 52, uh, we've got 48 here, 49. So uh, some of them are, are larger numbers, 54%, and some of them are smaller. So there's variability. And this always happens. If you need to go out to the population and take a random sample and compute a sample statistic, and you do that process several times. So uh, that's what's happened here. Uh, Quinnipiac went and found some voters and they surveyed them. Uh, the Economist did that, CNBC did that. Each of these groups got a different group of likely voters. And so when they found their sample proportion, the numbers varied. Uh, they're not gonna match the population proportion exactly. So in statistics, we have two big questions. And right now we're focusing on this one, which is what are some other reasonable values we could have observed? We saw this particular sample statistic, but what other sample statistics could we have seen if we had just taken a different sample? And if we wanna answer that question, we have to know how much the statistic is gonna vary from sample to sample. So ideally, in the best case scenario, we would take many samples from the population. We would go survey 1,500 voters and we'd find the proportion of them that plan to vote for Biden, we'd write that down. We'd go take another sample of 1,500 voters, ask them how they plan to vote, make the proportion, write that down. Go back, do that many, many times, and then we could see how much the statistics vary. But most of the time, we don't get to do that. Um, it's maybe too expensive uh, or it's too time consuming. Doing the US Census is a huge undertaking. We only do it once every 10 years. Polling agencies don't have the money to go out and conduct that many uh, separate samples.